Hello and welcome back to part three and we're looking at converted to Islam's video Paul and crucifixion. If you haven't seen parts one and two, uh, I suggest you stop it now and go back and view them. Only for your salvation and he believed that Jesus died on the cross as a human sin sacrifice and you needed to believe in that. No, it was God. It was a sacrifice provided by God. Yes, the body of Jesus died, but God never dies. As he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The body of Jesus died as a sacrifice, as the perfect and holy anointing sacrifice, so that we might be blessed in heavenly places. However, according to Levit Leviticus chapter 18, God is against human sacrifices, except when he provides the sacrifice. And he said this to Abraham. When Abraham was sacrificing Isaac, you guys believe it is Ishmael? On the altar, he stopped him and said, I will provide the sacrifice. What is that sacrifice according to Islam that God provides for all you Muslims? You have none. You have no atonement for your sins. And if you continue in this way, you're going to die in your sins and you're going to be sent to eternal damnation. Because you have no sufficient sacrifice. You are going up against a righteous God and all you have is a few good works. You think that is going to stand? It won't stand against a human judge. How do you think it will stand against a righteous God? See, this is why we can see the righteousness of God and the mercy of God is balanced at the cross. You don't have a balance, according to Islam. Sacrifice of Jesus in order to be saved. So Paul here says, oh, you stupid Galatians, what's wrong with you? Jesus died for your sins. Are you depending on the works of the law for your salvation, in, in other words? That's what he's saying here in, in Galatians chapter 3. So the evidence here suggests that the early Christians were not unanimous. They were not in agreement. There was no consensus that Jesus died on the cross for their sins as a human sin sacrifice. Instead, they believed that he did not die on the cross, and they um, believed in the works of the, of the law of God for their salvation, provided that they did those works with faith. As James says in, in his letter, faith without works is nothing. Paul, on the other hand, was struggling with those Christians, the Jewish Christians, saying that, no, faith alone is your salvation. As Paul says in, in Titus, chapter 1, verse 10. Okay, let's go over to Titus, chapter 1, and verse 10. Make sure, Christians, you check up on every single thing Muslims say, or atheist, or whoever it is. Don't take it at face value. Look deep into the verses they give you. And look at the surrounding passages. Because Peter writes in 2 Peter that people misunderstand and or purposely miscon misconstrued the messages of Paul. And so this is a warning. And we'll see in a second exactly that he is the one doing this. And that Peter is talking about people exactly like this converted to Islam guy practicing taqiyya on us trying to lie to us to promote his filthy prophet, the pedophile Muhammad. Uh, regarding the Jewish Christians, chapter 1, verse 10, uh, regarding the Jewish Christians, he says, quote, For there are also many rebels, idol talkers, and deceivers, especially the Jewish Christians, end quote. So Paul was opposed to the other Christians, the other sects. The Christians, the Jewish Christians of the Church of Jerusalem, for example. Yeah, but you see how he's trying to make them? the oh they're the right ones and paul isn't let's look at what they're what they were doing for there are many rebellious people mere talkers and deceivers especially those of the circumcision group they must be silenced because they are running they are ruining whole houses households by teaching things they ought not to teach and for the sake of dishonest gain so they were dishonestly gaining teaching this um, they were, ex you know, saying, oh yeah, we're the Jewish ones, we're the true ones from uh, the Jewish lineage, even though it's by faith, everybody gets this, this uh, blessing. Um, even one of their own prophets has said, Cretans are always liars, evil, brutes, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in faith, in the faith and will pay no attention to Jewish myths or to the commands of those who reject the truth. To the pure, all things are pure.
But to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciousness, consciousnesses are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. You must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be tempted, temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be uh, reverent in the way they live, not to be slanders or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. They can then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. So as we see what they were what they were doing by their actions, they were maligning the word of God, meaning as what he was saying is that they were um they were forsaking them for dishonest gain. Um they were teaching things they ought not to teach by saying, oh, you can drink much wine and get drunk. Um, the Bible does not condone wine, but what it condones is drunkenism. And um, they were being slanderous and the so forth, as we saw it listed. Also, they, another Christian group were the Docete. Uh, they, they had many different beliefs, but amongst the beliefs they had was that Jesus did not die. Uh, they are a Christian sect dating back to the Apostolic times, the first century Christianity. Their name is derived from the Greek word dokesis, which means appearance or semblance, because they taught that Christ only appeared to or seemed to have died and suffered on the cross. Yeah, and the disciples rejected that because our God is not a deceiver. Now, do you agree with this group of early Christians? Are you trying to say that they were the true Christians? Because they believe that there are two gods. One of them is evil and created an evil world. And then there, there is a good God. Do you agree with that? That would go against Islamic teachings. They believe that your Allah is evil. So are you agreeing with them? They also Similarly, they also agree that the body is evil and that spirit is good. That, um, that the earth that God created, that you believe Allah created, is an evil world. And that it is heaven that is good. Do you agree with them? No, you do not. So don't try and say that somehow they're authoritative because you wouldn't even agree with them if you were with the apostles. So Paul was he's writing this letter to the Galatians rebuking these other Christian beliefs that he considered heretical. That's quite interesting. Uh, many people do consider Paul the modern day or the founder of modern day Christianity because he wrote most of the books in the New Testament. I think there's 27 in the New Testament. He wrote at least about 14 or perhaps 15. And Jesus, of course, never wrote one. So I can understand the position of those who say Paul is the true founder of Christianity, Trinitarian Christianity. Okay. <clears throat> also, we look at... Well, I challenge you to go and say that Tafsir Abin... or go and say that Abin Kathir is a liar. I challenge you to go in front of the Muslims in an Islamic country under Islamic ruling and under Islamic law, which is what you want as a Muslim, ultimately, otherwise you wouldn't be in this religion, and go and say that uh, Ibn Kathir is a liar. They will be the first to chop your head off. So do you agree Ibn Kathir is a liar for saying Paul is one of the best, the strength, the strongest messengers of the Messiah? Galatians again, chapter 1, it says that Paul says, I am an apostle f not from human beings, but through, uh, nor through a human being, but through Christ Jesus and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So Paul is, is also uh, being apologetic here and uh, defensive, not only about the crucifixion of Jesus and salvation through faith without works in the law, he's also defensive about his leadership being questioned. No, what he's doing is establishing who he is. Because many of them were saying, oh, I'm a disciple of Peter. I'm a disciple of Paul. I'm a disciple of, of uh, Apollo. I'm a disciple of this. When they should all be saying, or I'm a disciple of John the Baptist. When they should all be saying, I am a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. And so he's saying, that is the example you should follow. That you should be by faith, not a by human or by men, but by faith, an uh, apostle of Jesus Christ. 
like all the brothers that are with him. And look what he writes, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, whom gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So it wasn't just him. This is how he started off all his letters. He wasn't just particular picking on them. What he was doing was strengthening the belief of all of the disciples and bringing them back into that belief so that they wouldn't uh, malign the word of God. Um, and I'm out of time. Stay tuned for part four.